Joining us this morning is Director of Research for Height Capital's Energy and Utilities Team, Ben Salisbury. Ben, it's good to have you. I guess uh, it really does come down to uh, Iran's involvement in, wh in what administrations around the world are able to prove, right? That's right. So there's a couple of elements that are that are really important to understand here when we think about the potential spillover to energy. Right? Remember, there's not direct oil implications for Israel or Hezbollah or, uh, excuse me, Hamas. Um, the implications come when uh, you look at, A, if there's some sort of investigation or intelligence that overturns and oversized a direct involvement from Iran or from sort of important senior Iranian officials, uh, especially the IRGC. Um, and then, so that's the direct path. And then there's a less direct path having to do with spillover as you get into the potential for proxy conflicts in Syria, Yemen, uh, Lebanon. Um, the potential involvement of Hezbollah. Uh, so Iran can get involved in a number of ways, but one of the important things we want to focus on is that there's not a direct connection yet, uh, and Israel's focus is more on the south at the moment, which clears oil supplies today. All right. If we start, end up talking about bad case scenarios like that, I mean, prior to this, uh, prior to the weekend, a lot of the discussion was about non-OPEC supply, was about Venezuela, it was about U.S. production being our own essential SPR. Uh, would that nearly be enough? So Iran is certainly less central to the global oil market than they had been in the past, uh, primarily because they remain under sanctions. Their exports are down from three-ish million barrels a day to one and a half to two. Now that's up from nearly a half million barrels a day a couple of years ago. Um, but they're not the world's largest supplier of oil to the market. They are an important supplier to China. Um, and that's where this bleeds over into Russia and Ukraine uh, and sort of the central role that Iran plays in kind of topping up the oil markets amid some of the other instability. Um, but it's not like it would have been, say, 10 years ago uh, if there was some sort of impairment to Iran. I think the biggest issue is the market's been relatively complacent about the geopolitical risk to oil uh, really since the collapse of the JCPO, the Iran nuclear negotiations, um, about a year, year and a half ago, um, because there's a lot of risk to Iran, there's a lot of risk elsewhere in the world, and we've been able to look past it. Ben Stiefel, uh, in a report this morning, says the wild card here is actually how Saudi Arabia responds, because they say, quote, the Saudis could act to stabilize energy markets and mitigate Iran's efforts to exploit the situation to its economic advantage. But do the Saudis have an incentive to actually do that, or is there more of a dis disincentive uh, for them to get involved in this way? So, as with everything you talk about Saudi Arabia, they have incentives on both sides. And their strategy for the better part of three years has been to maintain their optionality. They've got one foot in China, they've got one foot in the United States, they've got one foot in oil, they've got one foot in beyond oil. So, uh, boiling down their motivation to something as, as simplistic as that is, is going to, you're going to make mistakes more often than not. Um, I think that the Remember, Saudi is a rival slash sometimes enemy of Iran. And so it is their in, it is in their interest to keep Iran marginalized uh, and to keep Iranian oil production on the margin. If that means that they backfill lost Iranian production, uh, which both hurts Iran on revenue and benefits Saudi on revenue, uh, then that's a place that I don't think they'll hesitate to go. Um, but we've seen, as with the end of the Iran nuclear deal, um, that as Iran brings more barrels back to the market, Saudi Arabia would have a tougher time uh, sustaining supply.